Shalom and uh, welcome to the Middle East Report. In this programme today, we'll be discussing which city should be the international city, God City, Jerusalem, or the counterfeit city known as The Hague. Well, welcome to the programme, and uh, today's guest is all the way from the Netherlands. His name is Jack van der Tang, and you're the Director for Truth, Justice and Peace. So, warm welcome to the programme, Jack. Thank you, Simon, for receiving me. Pleasure. Uh, and, uh, uh, Jack, um, can you share with, with our viewers uh, how you came to faith in, in the Lord Jesus Christ? You know, I'm raised as a Christian in a Christian family. And uh, one day I was part of uh, the board of uh, church, a deacon, and I felt, is there really a God? So I was really in a moment in my life, uh, is there really a God? And I think I'm out of Christianity, but I was also in the car business and uh, that brought me to Romania. And in Romania I had an, uh, a meeting suddenly with somebody, uh, 94 years old, an amazing man of God. And he was sharing his testimony and I experienced the power of God for the first time in my life. And I remember when I came home and we didn't have cell phones, my wife opened the front door and the first thing she said, what happens with you? Your whole face is changed. There is something, what happens with you? And from that moment, my life was going uh, very fast. I changed, I was going to Bible school because I had heard in 1985 loud, the voice of the Lord, go and preach the gospel. And I found out after uh, some weeks that I had suddenly an amazing love for the people of Israel, for Israel, for the Jewish people. And 20 years later, when I did a television program, and they asked me my testimony, and I did some research about what happens that period in Romania, I found out that this man was Jewish. He was a very famous Jewish evangelist, and uh, I think that was amazing. And uh, nobody preached to me about Israel, but it was really the Holy Spirit who revealed Israel. Yeah. Amazing. So can you give us a little bit of an insight into um, the uh, Christian community in the Netherlands and the Jewish community and how the situation is regarding um, and how Israel's concede in the Netherlands? Because we know that the, uh, very much the Dutch resistance and many uh, Dutch people stood with the Jewish people during the, during the Nazi occupation of the Netherlands. No, we, we, we are not always the best people thinking by, because of Corrie ten Boom. In the Netherlands, who is very famous, and uh, she gives the picture that the Netherlands are very strong hiding the Jews, but that's not true. We have the highest rate in the whole of Europe where the Jews are being killed. Uh, not the numbers, just uh, more than 80, 85, 84% of the Jews are killed in the Second World War. Uh, but we see, like I think in every nation, uh, you see that the Christian church is divided. There is a group that is pro-Israel and a group that's not. Unfortunately, it's like always uh, everywhere uh, that the most churches are not pro-Israel. But I can give you a very uh, special testimony. Um, that uh, last year I organized the most historic event in the Netherlands in the oldest governmental building of the world and still in function, older even than in the UK. Um, and we did there a uh, very special uh, uh, event with the Jewish community, with the government, with uh, governmental leaders, parliament members, leaders from the Jewish community. And uh, I prayed for a word from the Lord. We had there an amazing meeting about what happens there in the war, that the first deed that was done by the Germans, by the leader, was a speech in that building. And never have there be a repentance about what happens there, because after that, the killing of the Jews started. And we did there an event and uh, I didn't realize it was on 25 June 2019. And the 27th of January, I was invited by the government, especially with my wife, as their guest, as the Auschwitz Remembrance in Amsterdam. And I was the only one with my wife and the minister board in the Netherlands, the government, that our prime minister, after, after 75 years, for the first time, officials say, sorry, 
And that is a direct result of the event what we have done in The Hague. So uh, I can tell you, I was sitting with other parliament members and we all start to cry because we understand what happens there. So, yeah, we are fighting for the Netherlands and we have a lot of people. We have uh, organizations who are very strong pro as well. Yeah, we are in the Netherlands. I think that we have a lot of organizations who are involved to help the Jewish people and to bless the Jewish people. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, uh, Jack, you've also produced this excellent uh, short film called um, Jerusalem or the Hague. Um, can you explain the context of this film and what this film's about? We'll show, we'll show an extract shortly. That's, uh, you know, I'm born and I'm raised in The Hague. I love my city and I understand that The Hague is important. And I had some years ago, I had an amazing experience that changed my life. I remember that we were organizing a demonstration in The Hague and thousands and thousands of people are coming. But suddenly because of logistic reasons, we have to change to another place. But I felt it's more than logistics. So I was praying. And I was praying and the Holy Spirit came over me and I start to cry. I start really to intend to cry. And I heard the voice, I'm angry on your city because your city has stolen the promises of my city, Jerusalem. And I can tell you, Simon, if you have that experience, something to totally changed in my, my whole thinking and my whole body, everything. Then I was understanding how important the Hague was, that the Hague always telling, and that's in the film, is about the Hague, um, is the city where the law is going out. But we know from the scripture, Isaiah 2, that the law will go out from Jerusalem. So you see that the Hague is a counterfeit of Jerusalem. But what I experienced with a lot of international guests when it came, we have more organizations in the Hague that I'm involved, that when I had special people from the States, uh, they came to the Hague, oh, we didn't know that the Hague was a city. We expected the Hague is the name of a court. And the Peace Palace, uh, you know, I was traveling in the east of Europe. I was speaking about it. People didn't absolutely know what I was talking about. So I was thinking, how can I explain to people how important the Hague is? Also, that Christians will be praying for this, that they will understand how important it is. And also, you know, it's a hot topic at the moment in Israel. Every week it's in the news about the Hague, the ICC, the International Court of Justice, and uh, the Crim International Criminal Court. Uh, especially the International Criminal Court, uh, could be very, very dangerous for the, uh, the people of Israel. So that, that made me to, uh, to produce a film like this. And I found somebody, Brian Sanders, in the States who has helped me with this film. And you have seen it, so I hope that uh, you like it. Excellent. And, and I'm sure viewers will like it as well. So let's show the first extract of this uh, excellent short film called uh, Jerusalem or The Hague. At least six Palestinians, including a local Hamas commander, have been killed after Israel carried out an undercover raid. Nine resolutions are introduced today in the United Nations to condemn Israel. 38% of all the resolutions of the United Nations Human Rights Council have been directed at Israel alone. History has proven when rulers or nations are going against God's land, or his capital, or his people, always there will be consequences. I will make Jerusalem a cup that will stagger the surrounding peoples. Even Judah will be caught up in the siege against Jerusalem. When that day comes, I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the peoples. All who try to lift it will hurt themselves, and all the earth's nations will be massed against her. This is what's happening today. This is what we experience today. And this is what the Bible calls the end times. There's a place in this world where important decisions are made for all nations. It's called The Hague. The city and the courts may be beautiful, 
but its political bias can prevent a nation from reaching its full destiny. Why do the nations gather and regimes talk in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the princes conspire secretly against God and against his anointed. Let us cut their cords and let us cast off their ropes from ourselves. For those who are not familiar with The Hague in the Netherlands, it's a center for international efforts to make the world a better place. It's renowned for being the international city of peace and justice and the second seat of the United Nations. And some world leaders have referred to it as the world's capital of law. The 100th year celebration of the Peace Palace in August of 2013, former Secretary General of the UN, Ban Ki-moon, summed it up with pride. Uh, today, The Hague is known as the legal capital of the world, an epicenter of international justice and accountability. Here in The Hague, you help sustain and expand the rule of law. You bring the rule of law to life. What people don't know about The Hague, that this city is not big. It has about a half million people. But the impact and the importance of The Hague worldwide is enormous. It's the home of two very important international law courts. The International Court of Justice, which is linked to the United Nations, and a new court, the uh, International Criminal Court. Every day, tens of thousands of people in The Hague work together towards a more peaceful and secure world. It hosts international conferences such as the Nuclear Security Summit and the Global Conference on Cyberspace. It's supposed to be a neutral ground for open dialogues and constructive debates. The tremendous diversity of the place is reflected in more than 160 non-governmental organizations and hundreds of international institutions. Behind me, you see the Peace Palace and the Peace Palace the opening of it was in 1913. All the world leaders came to The Hague for the special event. But at that moment, they're not talking about the Peace Palace, they're talking about the Temple of Peace. So the name Peace Palace came after the Second World War, much later. But this is the most important building for the United Nations if you talk about the court. And that court in the Peace Palace is the International Court of Justice. The ICJ, the International Court of Justice, is there for uh, rivals between countries, between states. The ICC, the International Criminal Court, is there for uh, prosecute individuals who stand behind the most severe and crucial human rights violations. This is basically the difference between those two legal tribunals. Avi Bell, an international law professor, shares about a conference he attended at the Peace Palace in June of 2017. The controversial topic concerned Resolution 2334, Israel and international law. It was designed to create the impression that international law condemns every claim of Israel to land, every claim of Israel to territory, that international law requires Israel to discriminate against Jews in matters of uh, residence, that it requires Israel not to take steps to defend itself against terrorism, a whole host of claims, and it was uh, trying to put this anti-Israel narrative into uh, a legal wrapping 
so that people would believe that international law does not support Israel's claims. And that excellent short film uh, produced by Jack called Jerusalem or the Hague gives us so much information about what's going on in the Hague and why the Hague is so important. Um, what I found extraordinary was, was the opening scene. You first had the kind of news reports of Israel condemning Israel. Um, then uh, that uh, UN uh, notification came up saying that 38 of all UN resolutions are directed at, at Israel, um, UN security resolutions. Uh, and why is it that Israel is singled out amongst these globalist institutions such as the, uh, the, the UN, such as uh, the European Union? And why is it that the Jews are considered, um, Israel is considered like the Jews among the nations? You know, people have written books about it. Why? So for me, to give a short answer is not easy. But personal, I believe, because the Jews remember the people to the God of Israel. So the hate to Israel is the hate to the God of Israel. So they don't want to be involved in it. They don't, don't want to be confronted with it. That's, for me, I think that's the main reason. Um, that's, I think that is really uh, the issue of it. Uh, Israel is different than all the other nations. The people of Israel are different than all the other people. And a lot of them don't want to be that. They want to be the same, but that's really the issue. I can't give another explanation for myself. That's very short, and I know people have written books, hundreds and hundreds of pages, so, <laughs> yeah. But it does very much seem that when it comes to the United Nations, that, that Israel is singled out more than any other nation, that Israel faces more condemnation than any other nation. Yeah. And then we look at the horrific human rights abuses in Iran or in Syria, uh, North Korea, the world is silent. But, apps, but the UN just love to condemn Israel for building homes in their eternal city, which is Jerusalem. Yeah, it's crazy. And I think that Islam is also very important in this whole issue, because Islam, uh, there are a lot of nations that are uh, Islam nations, and they are very against Israel. So they have a very strong voice. In the film later, there is somebody who is sharing about that. If they want to go, the sun go up in the West, there will be a vote. He's saying that they will vote for it. They will change everything if they will propose it. And, um, but it's, if you think really what's going on, and you see what happened in the Middle East. And it's silent about what's going on there. Everybody's afraid, but Israel is an easy target for them also. I think that is also an, an, an issue that it, you can take Israel. That's also in the ICC, in The Hague. Um, so it's, I can't explain, because it's totally nonsense. It's stupid, it's crazy how it's possible, but they're still doing it. It's still going on. And, yeah. Uh, uh, and Jack, do you want, also want to explain to us, I mean, you, you did in that excellent um, uh, film that you produced there, talking about the significance of The Hague, but the fact is that the UN um, are investing so much in The Hague and trying to create The Hague as an international um, city of law um, in, in which international law will soon probably uh, bypass national laws and national governments. And this is all part of the globalist plan, isn't it, yep. to create world government? Can you explain and elaborate a little bit more on, on this? For no, I, 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 you know, last week I had a dinner uh, in the Jewish community with the rabbi and some top leaders. I was invited, I was sitting to the director of the Peace Palace and I asked him the question also, why is The Hague so important? Why not another city? Why special The Hague? That is also part of the history when our family, royal family, has everywhere connections also with the Tsar of Russia. And then you see that it's more and more coming and we have the Peace Palace now. But um, why, why this is so important and why this is going on? Um, you know, what, what, what I see is that in a way, um, in The Hague, there are also judges that are really good people and really hoping for a better world and doing their best they can. But in The Hague, the question is still for me, and after so many years, I'm trying to find out why The Hague is so important, but they are spending a lot of money. Also, because our government is really giving a lot of money to get it there, to, to make our city very important, because our city is official cult, and you see in The, in the Hague everywhere, you see the logo with the city of peace and justice. Uh, justice and peace, city of justice and peace. But it's, uh, 
it's still a battle. Um, they're bringing a lot of money. But it's so interesting that sometimes you see that there is a result of a case between nations eh, in, in the Peace Palace, and they're coming. But it's still, it's a binding advice. It's not, everybody thinks that this is what they have to do, that's it. No, it's a binding, it's, it's a proposal. It's not official, they have to listen. That's, that's also a little bit uh, giving confusion to a lot of people understanding what's going on, that if there is a result, this is what you have to do. No, that's not what they have to do, if they want to listen, yeah. Uh, right, so, so we, we see in The Hague it's um, divided between the International Criminal Court and is it the International Criminal Court of Justice? Yeah. Uh, what is the difference between these two functioning courts that act as the kind of legal body for... What, what you have seen in the film, you have seen the Peace Palace. The Peace Palace has the International Court of Justice. And the International Court of Justice is direct uh, connected with the Uni United Nations. And there, there is always uh, an between, uh, if there is something that's between nations. It's about the border or other situations. That's only between nations. It's not about persons. And the ICC, the International Criminal Court, that is not connected with the UN. That is a direct result from the Treaty of Rome. So that's the result of that. And that is unite, like the unite, uh, United States, uh, Israel. Uh, I think that China and Russia are not official recognized this ICC. But the problem is that it's a very powerful uh, weapon for these nations. Imagine that uh, that's the, the fear in Israel that you will have uh, a general like General Gantz. They were talking about General Gantz, who is now involved in politics, to bring him at court. So he's not coming, of course not. And if there will be a case, and imagine that he will be guilty, and there will be, he has to go to prison, for example, he's not coming. But now, he's going to travel. He's going to the United States and he has to stop for in, an, in, in a city or in a nation in, uh, in Europe for his connection flight. And then they can arrest him because he's on the ground of that nation that is part of the ICC. So the ICC is in a way, in a way very dangerous for nations, all the nations, because the, the world where you're living in will be very small if they want to, to get you. Yeah. And it's also what I know, I've been there in, I have spoken with people and I know that not so many people have been there. Um, it's, it's very political. There's a uh, political issue, yeah. So let's see uh, some more of this uh, excellent film, uh, uh, Jerusalem or The Hague. Points of view, but resolution 2334 could not be justified. When we're talking about the courts in, in The Hague, the International Criminal Court and the International Court of Justice, we have to look at them the way we look at the United Nations. And their organizations whose role in the Arab-Israeli conflict is primarily one of anti-Israel public relations. And that's, that's what we're going to see as a result of whatever decisions they make. Anti-Semitism has plagued Israel throughout history. But now, as a dispute over their land and the capital in Jerusalem drags on, it's time for the nations to know that Israel truly has a legal right to exist. Anti-Semitism is so deeply ingrained in so many institutions that it's very hard to get out. That's what I really think. There's uh, several thousand years of building it and it doesn't disappear in a day. Legally speaking by international law, there is no doubt that we have the right for this land, at least from the Mediterranean to the Jordan River, if not more than that. Legally speaking, that's it. Now, it's ignored almost completely by everybody, mainly by the ICC. Otherwise, they would have never dared uh, dealing with the complaints against Israel. They would have said, you know, it, it should be rejected. It's, it shouldn't even be uh, discussed. If you go back to the legal documents that founded the State of Israel, go back to the San Remo Re Resolution, the Paris Conference after World War I, Israel has a legal right, according to international law, to this land. And not just Israel as it is right now, but to the West Bank, uh, to the Golan Heights, to even Gaza itself. And so if you go back to those foundational, legal, international documents, you'll see a completely different story from what people are telling in the news today. The right of Jews to settle in that land was guaranteed not just by practice and morality 
and uh, religious belief, but by international law. It was anchored in the charter of the Mandate of Palestine, which told us that the administrating power was responsible for encouraging close settlement of Jews on the land. Unfortunately, The Hague has also become one of the centers of twisting international law rhetoric into anti-Israel tools. The Hague is right now the place where there are uh, legal proceedings going on against Israeli claims. In the International Court of Justice, the PLO is suing the United States for the alleged wrong, for the alleged crime of moving its embassy to Israel's capital, Jerusalem. Now, the PLO is doing so as uh, in the name of a state of Palestine, which the registrar of the International Court of Justice has decided to recognize as a state, uh, even though it doesn't meet the, meet the international legal conditions for doing so. In a proceeding in March 2019, the Palestine Liberation Organization, known as the PLO, as well as the PA, the Palestinian Authority, acted as an illegal state of Palestine. They asked the prosecutor at the International Criminal Court to look into Israel's alleged crimes against them. Now, there's almost complete overlap between the, the PLO and the Palestinian Authority. They share the same personnel, they have the same president. By alleged crimes in the territory of Palestine, what the PLO means is things that were done contrary to what the PLO wants by Israel. Um, the ICC is not looking at any of the real crimes committed by the, the PLO and by uh, Palestinian terrorist organizations. Um, instead, what it is examining is the so-called crime of Jews living where the PLO does not want them to live. And we can see that uh, global institutions um, like that in The Hague uh, just do nothing but uh, sadly condemn Israel. Uh, and, and this is something that I think we, we really need to get to grips with, uh, Jack, and, and this is these global institutions, whether it's uh, the European Union or whether it's the UN or whether it's the International Criminal Court in The Hague, whether this is the United Nations Human Rights um, Agency, uh, they have this obsession with Israel. Um, which is beyond an obsession, uh, and, and, and singling out Israel, uh, attacking Israel. And how is the International Criminal Court in The Hague being used to undermine Israel's moral authority and standing, but also questioning Israel's uh, legal foundation and right to exist? I know that, for example, the ICC, that the case is there, that the, some people are talking, especially the nations in Africa, you are against the black people. So, uh, and now from Europe, there's a lot of money coming from Europe to the ICC, and they're pushing now to uh, bring uh, Israel on court and uh, to fight against them. It's an easy target, some Israeli said. And I think it's also anti Semitism. But that will, they will don't say it loud. But what I have experienced, for example, you know, I was there in the ICC and uh, I was there with an organization from uh, Israel and they brought a case against Mahmoud Abbas and the leader of Hamas and they said uh, I was there personal with them so I'm a, maybe the only Christian who ever have been with such a case in the ICC and they said all your papers all your case it's perfect everything and then this year that the Palestinian brought a case to Israel it was terrible, it was Arab, nothing was correct, it was a, a, a chaos. And now we see that the ICC is trying to pick up the case against Israel and they don't do anything because the case against Mahmoud Abbas was hundreds and hundreds of testimonies. People are martyred, are killed. Testimonies on paper, on uh, recordings, on uh, video, uh, interviews, everything there. So there is so much uh, proof what Mahmoud Abbas is doing and what the PA is doing and you don't hear anything. So this is really amazing. And you can't believe what's going on. The hate to Israel, it's sometimes, I can't explain it. I can't understand it because it's so clear that something is not correct. And there is the hate to Israel. It's, it's, it's still, 
we can talk about it and, and we, we can't find it. I think it's still a hate to God and people don't understand it, but that's what it is for me. Yeah. Uh, Jack, uh, a, a, a few years now interviewed, uh, a few years ago I interviewed uh, Dr. Michael Oren, who was uh, Israel's uh, former ambassador to the United States. Uh, he's also worked as a minister in the Prime Minister's office. And when I interviewed him in the Knesset, um, he said that he he's very, very troubled by the International Criminal Court in The Hague. And this is what he fears, that any future conflict where Israel is attacked by Hamas, yeah. attacked by Hezbollah, or even by uh, the Palestinian Authority themselves uh, through terrorism, and Israel defends herself, um, what they are fearful of is the fact that the Palestinian Authority will then take this to the International Criminal Court and then try and bring prosecutions against Israeli soldiers and Israeli generals for defending their nation against terrorism, which is absolutely ridiculous uh, because the first duty of any government is the security of its own people. And if you can't provide the security for your own people, then you don't have the right to be a, a functioning state. So this is a very, very dangerous president. Um, uh, is this also your concern with the way that the International Criminal Court is going? He was here four years ago. That's what's now happening. He was right, his fear. My, I was last week in Israel and I spoke with an, uh, a very famous lawyer and he said, I'm talking for many years to the Israeli government that they have to make a committee and to fight against this. And they are ignoring it. And because they are ignoring it, they are making a big, big mistake because they don't take it too serious. This is really a mess. And so there are different opinions and different thinking about how to deal with the ICC. But he was very uh, outspoken uh, when last week to me that they have to bring top lawyers together and to, to make a case what's going on. Yeah, because it's very dangerous, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's have a, a, a little bit more of uh, this excellent film, uh, Jerusalem or the Hague. I don't see resolutions about North Korea or Cuba or Syria or whichever country may be, but specific on Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East. What we see is that there is an um, enormous bias against Israel. And I think when we are here with this parliament in the city of justice and peace, it's a specific obligation of our parliament to be against such a bias. The office of the prosecutor at the ICC, the court which targets the most horrendous war crimes around the world, is currently addressing war crimes committed by Ismail Hainia, the head of Hamas in Gaza. He already has 17,000 children recruited to participate in hostilities against Israel. Also, at least half of the 30,000 Palestinian children have been raised on values of hatred and war. So we have Palestinians working 24-7 in order to attack the state of Israel, to drag the state of Israel from the back door to the ICC. As recently as April of 2019, another complaint or request was filed with the ICC to open an investigation into Palestinian war crimes. This case is against Mahmoud Abbas, the head of the PA. For crimes against humanity, he committed against the civil population of the West Bank or Judea and Samaria. And we're talking about imprisonment, we're talking about torture and even murder against each and every individual that dared to criticize Abbas himself or his government. The tide of opinion against Israel doesn't seem to be changing. Currently, The Hague and the UN are the premier man-made centers of justice and have ruled the world for 100 years. However, the New Jerusalem in the time of the millennium will be much more powerful. The Messiah himself will reign for 1,000 years and he will rule with truth. Today, the leaders of the world nations gather frequently, and they'll gather in the capitals of the world. They'll gather in Paris, they'll gather in Washington, or they'll gather in The Hague. But in the Bible, there's only one city where the nation leaders are meant to gather, and that's Jerusalem. This is what we are seeing now. We're facing a new world order. The nations of the world are not willing to accept the rules 
of the word of the God of Israel. Isaiah chapter 2 says that the law of the Lord will come forth from this city. So there's really a battle going on between who is the rightful legal heir to this world. Is it man there in The Hague or is it the Lord himself here in the city of Jerusalem? One of the most important descriptions of the city of Jerusalem, the essence of the city of Jerusalem is described in Zechariah chapter 8 verse 16. It says, speak truth to one another, render true and perfect justice in your gates. But in Hebrew, it's so much more rich in Hebrew. Speak emet, one to his fellow. Emet umishpat shalom shivtu b'sha'arechem. Emet, truth, mishpat is justice, and shalom, of course, is peace. The prophet says that in the city of Jerusalem, you have three pillars that you need to focus on and you need to speak about. Emet, mishpat, and shalom. Truth, justice, and peace. That's interesting. Three things. Truth, justice, and peace. Then in the Mishnah, there is an explanation. Why three? Because they say, the world is sustained on three pillars, truth, justice, and peace. And then why three pillars? Why not four? Why not two? Why exact three pillars? And the answer is, if you have a table with four legs and you cut off one leg, the table will still stand. But if you have a table with three legs and you cut off one of the legs, the table will collapse. And that's also with the world. If one of the pillars is not there, the world will collapse. It's interesting that The Hague is called the city of peace and justice, in that order. But you need the truth to have justice, and then there will be peace. So how can you start with peace? So, and that's what we are missing, the truth. And part of the process, the peace process, has been where organizations and people tried to hide the truth. And when you try to hide the truth, distrust, mistrust, comes into play. But yet one tiny nation is judged by many, many nations because of their personal prejudices against that nation. And it can't be right and it isn't right. But actually we know that justice will take place for Israel, but it'll take place in Jerusalem when God judges Israel and judges all the nations of the world through his own lens of truth and true justice. I can see why Jerusalem is God's eternal city because of those three pillars of truth, justice and peace. Uh, which makes me ask the very important question to you, Jack, because uh, you did a fantastic job with, with that uh, short film, um, okay. explaining The Hague, explaining um, the counterfeit, which is The Hague, compared to God's eternal city, Jerusalem. Um, but how does The Hague compare to Jerusalem and what's the difference between the two in terms of The Hague being man city and Jerusalem being God city? In the Bible it's written that when the Messiah will reign from Jerusalem, the law, but in Hebrew the word Torah will be there, uh, then he will bring justice uh, in the world. Now is The Hague the capital and claiming that they are bringing justice. Do, do you see justice in the world? I don't see it. I, I really personally believe that. That's also my, the reason that I'm doing the things that I'm doing. Uh, that only when the Messiah will be in Jerusalem, there will be justice. And in The Hague, if you are seeing everything what happens, and I really believe that there are really good people with a good heart and really longing for justice, for righteousness. But it's not working. It's not working. And if you see that if the Messiah will reign from Jerusalem, he will use the Torah. That's one book or five books in a way. So it's like this. And, and in, in The Hague, they have 16 kilometers. I think that's 10 miles of books about international law. And there is no Torah scroll or no Torah in the library of The Hague. And they are searching for answers. They're searching for everything. That's all about mankind. It's thinking about mankind. God is not there. 
And I was sitting with the director of the library of the Peace Palace and he's not a believer. And when I talk about uh, the Torah and I see that he see water burning, <laughs> he, he can't understand what's all about. They are blind. And, but this is really uh, a revelation that you have to see and to understand what's going on the battle with. It's a counterfeit. And what I experience if I'm bringing people uh, to the Hague and there is a visitor center. So I am always giving them a tour there. And, and when you are listening there to all the recordings and then when they're talking about this is the temple of peace, that is really a change in the thinking of a lot of people. Because a temple, yeah, that's the original name. A temple, that means that something religious is going on. And then you're going to understand that the temple in Jerusalem where our Messiah will reign, and there is the temple in The Hague. That's really interesting because there is no other temple. Uh, yeah, there are temples by uh, other religions, but not in this way. So there is something very unique, unique. If you see it, your eyes will be opened about the battle, what's going on. It's a counterfeit and that's what I experience, what I hear from people. Jack, for the first time in our life, we really understand what you're talking about because they heard me many times talking about this battle. But when they are there, something is different. And I believe that the film is also open the eyes of a lot of Christians, yes. Uh, and Jack, you also make a, a kind of profound point that without truth, there can be no justice. Uh, and that's so true. So when uh, the International Criminal Court um, in The Hague decide these cases pretty much targeting against Israel, we're living now in such a post-Judeo-Christian uh, society where our, our values and our morals are no longer based upon the Bible. So therefore, those morals are objective morals, aren't they, when it comes to international law? This is my opinion on what should be law, or this is my opinion on that. It's not based on anything. No. There's no foundation there. It's gone. Um, and with that, we'll, we'll actually crumble. But doesn't that just show us where the world is heading and the direction the world is heading in when we take... Christ out of the picture. Yeah, to be honest, we, uh, that's what the Bible said about the end times, about the change and that we will be more and more going away from the word of God, from everything what is teached by us. And so people don't want to know. And because the battle uh, with our belief, that is also the way they are acting more and more because they don't want to be they don't want to be aware of anything about God or about the Ten Commands or about the, the commands in the Bible. That's really a battle and, and it will be worse. That's what I believe. It will be worse and worse and everything that you're talking about, there will be... That's what you see in the States. If you see the battle between light and the battle between dark, that, that's what we are experiencing also in the Hague, yes. So, so also the other thing that's also troubling as well is, is that... Um, the further our nations go in terms of um, surrendering our national sovereignties, I mean, thankfully, our nations come out of the European Union, but, but what we're seeing is a more of a globalist trend, giving more and more sovereignty to international sovereign organisations. And yeah. um, when you have the International Criminal Court, they can cause problems, but if it's not backed up by kind of military force, it doesn't have any kind of power or any weight behind it. How do you think that the International Criminal Court and The Hague will be used during the reign of the Antichrist during the Tribulation period? <laughs> That's a very interesting question. You know that there is a, a prison very close to the ICC and my son is working there for the Department of Justice. So there is a special, a big prison that uh, will bring uh, war criminals in this building. So there is, in a way, all a police force. So if you're being there in the ICC, they have their own uh, police force there uh, with uh, their own uniforms, everything. So I will be not surprised if something will be there in the future. I have not heard it, but this is a very interesting uh, thing that could be developed in the coming years, yes, because that's what they need. And also, why The Hague? Why, why have the International Criminal Court in The Hague? Because obviously the headquarters of, of the, uh, the UN are based in New York. Then we've got the United Nations um, Human Rights Council, which is based in Geneva. 
in Switzerland. Yeah. Um, and we have the European Union's headquarters in Brussels as well as NATO. Um, and also then now the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Why do you think the United Nations has, has chosen The Hague as the place to administer law for the entire world? I talked earlier in this program about it, with, I spoke with the director of the Peace Palace. Why is The Hague chosen? He gave a an, an, an whole story, but I'm not sure if that's right. It's still, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about many years and doing research, and I still, every time I see that our royal family was really uh, a central a key factor in this, and because also with uh, your royal family in England, with the Tsar, uh, the family in, in Russia and other leaders that, and we are neutral. You know that when this opened the Peace Palace in 1913, in 1914 we know that the second of the First World War started, the, the Netherlands was the only nation in Europe, there was no war. So that's, that's always interesting to see it, but why the Hague? It's still uh, a question that, to be honest, I'm not sure how to answer it. Uh, there are different opinions about it, and uh, it's, not, it's not just by accident. I think there's really a goal by it, yes. Uh, and also, which we didn't show in the film, uh, you mentioned about how the, the world's religious leaders are coming to The Hague in June 2020 um, to sign a declaration of a friendship treaty. Can you share with us what that's about? Is that leading the world into a kind of one world religion? That's an issue what I discussed last week also. And um, if this is really the plan, and the guy who was in charge uh, said, I don't know, there was an, uh, uh, a rabbi who is involved in it because the, the Jews are also some parts of uh, uh, groups of the Jews are also involved. I think that it could be very uh, interesting. I think that it is possible that the new world religion uh, can start there. But what I have heard from a friend who have done a lot of research that there are already done in secret six uh, gatherings worldwide with all big religious leaders to talk about what's going on in June. So I'm still waiting and I have no idea what to expect when they're coming together. And that is also interesting. Why are they doing this in The Hague? Why not in Rome? Why not somebody else? It's really in The Hague because it's neutral. And then it's also again interesting that The Hague, it's the temple of peace, that this is really by purpose that have chosen this building. But we have to see, we have to wait and to experience what will go on. I don't know exact the details, but I have my contacts in the Peace Palace and I'm asking and, and they are very careful with the answers to me. So uh, we will see. I'm not surprised, especially now. Um, so Jack also, yeah, is it uh, believed that the Pope will be there as well? Um, because for some reason, um, which is completely anti-God in a sense is, is the pluralism, to bring all world religions under one yeah. roof and under one control. Um, and yet Jesus said, I am the way, the light and the truth, and no one comes to the Father except Amen. me. Uh, this is building a kind of false peace and a false unity, isn't it? I am worried about so many Christians who don't see it. And I think it's good because everybody wants peace. So we have to go for it. and. Uh, but the problem is that so many Christians believe that, for example, the God of Islam is the same God of the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And that's not true. I believe really that's not the same God. That's another. There's only one God. And that's the problem. If you're bringing the, together, and that's what the Pope is doing, he said, it's the same God. It's the same God. We are all worshiping there's only one God. And if it's from the Hindus or the Buddhists or from uh, the Islam, it's all the same God. No, it's a joke. It's a farce. That's not true. And I'm surprised, and when I'm talking with my Jewish friends, I have a lot of Jewish uh, ultra-Orthodox rabbis, and they said, Jack, what are you talking about? About, no, it's the same God. And then I'm going to explain, and we have some discussions, and they're shocked when I'm sharing about how it's possible that you believe that this is the same God. And I'm going to explain about the history, about how it started, uh, the Islam. And they have no idea. So what also important is that there will be a teaching about the history of this kind of things, and that is not the same God. Uh, Jack, we're down to the last uh, three minutes or so of, of the programme. So the, firstly, um, how can our viewers watch your excellent short film uh, to educate all of us about The Hague 
and also the, the plan of the globalists? Um, and also, what should our response as Christians be to what we've seen today and, and, and what you've said? First is you go to Vimeo and then you are going to search um, The Hague or Jerusalem. It's in seven languages. So we have a lot of subtitles there. Uh, it's on the website of Pillar of Fire, not of ICTIP, but it's on the Vimeo channel of Pillar of Fire. That's also one of my organizations. Uh, and for me, it's important that people understanding what's going on. And I think that every believer is waiting and longing for the coming of the Messiah. If it's the first or the second coming, that's a discussion with our Jewish friends. But uh, I think it's so important that this is the only solution of the world. It will be worse and worse and worse. There's only one solution, that's the coming of the Messiah. So when we are starting to pray and to understand that the Hague is the counterfeit and we're going to pray also that the restoration will be there, that the law will go out from Jerusalem, I think that's very important that people are understanding and praying for that fact. I think that's also pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That's part of it. And that's the, the job for them. And within 30 seconds, uh, Jack, do you think this is why there is such an intense battle over Jerusalem? Yes, I really believe it. Because if he is coming back, or he is coming, then there will be a restoration and the enemy don't like it. So that's all the battle about. Uh, Jack, I just want to thank you so much uh, for being my guest on the Middle East Report today and, and to share with us uh, uh, man's city, The Hague, and how it's being used by the globalists to try and administer peace and justice, which we know will be a false peace and justice. So thank you so much for being my guest today. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, I just want to thank you for watching today's Middle East Report. I, I don't know about you, but I've definitely learned something today. And uh, this is the design that the globalists have for The Hague to create that as a city of law for the entire world and to govern the entire world with their laws. But we have to remember that there is only one God, and that's the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, and his laws go out from Jerusalem. So I'm going to leave you with this beautiful song by Josh Aaron, which is Jerusalem, God's eternal city, Jerusalem. I'll see you.